All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. I have a couple of business type announcements to make before we begin, before I turn things over to the mayor. Um, so the first announcement has to do with technology. I think all of you know this, but because this is a public meeting, it is being broadcast live over Zoom. So the public uh, and the media can watch through Zoom. I know, check your hair. I had to check mine a few times. Um, but they cannot participate via Zoom. They can only observe for this. I'm gonna talk a little bit later about how they can participate. We wanna make sure to leave that avenue open. But because um, we have a lot of sort of very particular work to do, this was a good compromise we felt. Um, the second thing is the city would like to record the Zoom because in, in sort of the spirit of transparency, we're going to be posting the readings that all of you read. We'll be posting the agenda that you have on your chair and then a summary from the meeting and ideally the recording. So I know this is, this is not my preferred method to just say, is everybody okay with that? Because if you're not, maybe you feel embarrassed about that. If you're not okay with being recorded, please just come see me, okay? Um, but we're going to go ahead and record the Zoom today so that that can be posted. And then the other thing is because we are on Zoom, again, not my preference, but in order for you to be heard, you're going to have to speak into the mic. So we have a couple of handheld mics that will run around to you. I think you can hold it like about a fist distance from your chin. I hate speaking into mics too. Maybe it makes you nervous. It makes me nervous, uh, but it's the way we can be heard to the public. If at any time you want coffee or water, please just pop up and help yourselves. Be informal about that. And restrooms are down the hall and on the left. So please just take care of yourself for the next 90 minutes, okay? We'll do introductions in a few minutes, but for now, I'm gonna turn things over to Mayor McLean. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I wanna welcome you all and say um, thanks to each and every one of you for agreeing to be part of this task force. I really appreciate it. Um, the community appreciates it. To kick things off, <clears throat> what I wanted to do was um, really set the stage, share with you my expectations from each of you as a member of this committee, um, reflect on the values that I ask and expect that you bring to this because they're Boise values, um, and then talk about the charge and where we head from here. And so first off, <clears throat> I asked you to be a part of this committee um, because we need shelter in our community. We must serve those that, who are most vulnerable in our community. And we need to address housing, the needs for housing, but we can't forget the emergency needs that occur in this community night by night by night. And so I ask that you come to this with an open mind, um, with a sense of service to the people that live in this community, all people, um, no matter how they live, as Boiseans who are here um, in the place that we all hold dear. Um, and to do that um, with an open mind, to look at the data, to hear information that will be presented by so many people, um, but to remember always that we are talking about fellow Boiseans um, that need support and service as we seek to provide for emergency needs and ultimately move them into house and home. And so I'm asking you to do that. And then at the end of this, to deliver to me um, in my administration and ultimately to the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Council, a recommendation around shelter and how we do shelter better in Boise. It needs to be something that meets the current needs, that has an eye towards future, um, that seeks to really set the stage to be a model in Boise because we can bring new solutions to scale and that works for the organizations that are here in service to those that need the shelter, in this case, Interfaith. And so I don't expect that everybody will agree on everything. We're gonna have tough conversations. We're gonna be learning together. I love that there's, this is a seminar format in many ways. You're gonna have lots of stuff to read and then we're gonna ask you to discuss, um, to hear information, to take into account um, who we serve, where we live um, and what we all owe each other. Um, and then those that live in this community um, to work through that together. And at the end of these eight weeks to present a recommendation. And my commitment to you is that I will take that recommendation seriously that I will work with our city staff here um, to ensure that they work to support that recommendation so we can move a solution 
that meets the needs of Boise Forward. Um, and I'd ask that you as a committee be prepared to present that recommendation, not only to me, um, but to the Planning and Zoning Commission and ultimately to Council. And I know, I, I know that we can do this. It's not, as I said, it's not gonna be easy. There's gonna be tough moments. There have been tough moments. There will always be tough moments. Um, but if each of us comes together, remembering who we are, why we're here and who we serve, um, I am confident that together we can come up with a solution and a recommendation that we will all take to heart and then work very hard to ensure that we implement in service to those um, who need us now. And so thanks again so much for being here. Um, for being willing in this you know, time of summer uh, to get together for eight weeks to, um, to help move us towards a solution that we can all work for together. Really appreciate your willingness to serve um, not only um, those and, and the city in this process, but the entire community. Um, and I'll be looking forward not only to seeing the end result, um, but to learning and following along and hearing your process throughout the way. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. All right, so um, next up, we're gonna hear a little bit more about the task force, about our charge and about the goals of the task force. And to do that is Courtney Washburn, who's the mayor's chief of staff and also the chair of the, the non-voting chair of the task force. Hand things over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Courtney Washburn. I am the chief of staff uh, for the city of Boise. And I um, am with you today as the um, chair of this task force. I'm a non-voting member, and I perceive my role as being primarily to protect the process, make sure everyone is heard and everyone is able to contribute in a way that is comfortable um, to get us to um, final recommendations. So just as a reminder, um, what we hope to do is um, produce a set of final recommendations. Um, those recommendations will include information about siting of the shelter, um, including the State Street um, location, in addition to a suite of best practices to address um, what we're doing in the shelter for the community. Um, we will also um, hope to provide a clear course of action and foundation for shelter as part of Boise's long-term response to homelessness. Um, so that is really the charge we have at hand. Um, the best part about working for the mayor is I always follow her and I never know what she's going to say. And normally she takes all my talking points. So I'll be particularly brief today. Um, but at any time during this process, you have any questions, you have any concerns, you have um, things you'd like to share, I'm your person. Um, and again, my charge is to protect this process and make sure everyone can contribute in a way that's comfortable to them. Um, we ask that you prepare for each meeting to do your readings, to ask questions beforehand to help us keep the process moving. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Jen. All right, thanks so much. So I know that this is a big circle and I don't like how far apart we are with each other, but we're trying to do a little bit of distancing for safety and also to create a sense of sort of we're all in this together. So we're gonna start with some introductions. Here is just to prep you. I also get a lot of anxiety when I have to introduce myself in groups. Does that happen to anyone else? No, just me, okay. Um, so tell us your, oh already by the way this is elizabeth she's doing social media for the city so did you get that on video you live tweet that oh, okay all right so um let's see let's do your name i'll pick up that pen in a minute uh your affiliation if you have one and if you don't that's fine and then um how about something you're appreciating right now or looking forward to if you're in a place where you're not appreciating anything, that's okay. So I'll go first just to model and to introduce myself to you. I am Jen Schneider. I am your facilitator for the task force. I am a professor in the School of Public Service at Boise State. And something that I've been particularly appreciating is the mornings. I don't know if you feel that too, but just with the heat and the smoke, being able to go out and water my garden or ride my bike or walk my old little chihuahua has been 
a nice reprieve from the heat. So that is what I've been appreciating. We'll just do this randomly because that keeps me on my toes. How about if we start with you, Katie? Uh, my name is Katie Decker and I'm with the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association. Um, something I'm appreciating is the chance to bike commute downtown again in the post COVID world. <laughs> Um, I'd also like to hand it off to Gary, just to note that um, I had a backpacking trip planned in a few weeks, so I will be absent from a few sessions. So Gary is here to listen in, and he'll be standing in for me when I'm gone. Hi, I'm Gary Zimmerman, and I'm the on the board of directors for the VPNA. Um, I enjoy just getting out of my bike this summer. You know, yeah, it's hot in the afternoon, but it's been awesome in the morning. So. We're gonna go randomly. Oh. <laughs> no, I, 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 we're not gonna pass it around. That wouldn't be fun. That's no fun. All right, how about you, Penny? Hi, I'm Penny Beach. I'm a family physician. I'm the chief medical officer for the Family Medicine Residency of Idaho, which is a federally qualified health center. We have um, about 25,000 patients in the Treasure Valley, and 50% of them are people who are low income. Um, most recently, we've been working with Interfaith and the other shelters in town. On the response to the COVID pandemic, we did a lot of vaccinations, um, and we also were the medical support for the COVID hotel. Um, things that I'm appreciating, I love Boise, but I have a plane ticket on Friday to the Bay Area where the high is 70 degrees. <laughs> we're all bringing it in. All right, Laura, why don't you pick somebody? Thank you. Just be able to just do a quick Hi, um, my name is Annie McCutcheon, and I am just finishing my master's program in mental health counseling. Um, I, my affiliation, I was surprised to see when it was posted. I am a neighborhood leader, um, but that you don't see yourself that way. It was just a, a gifted title that I wasn't expecting. Put it on your resume. Yeah. So now. Now I'm a neighborhood leader. I live in the Collister neighborhood. Um, something I am something I'm connecting with is I'll be leaving for a camping trip for three days tomorrow, and it'll be the first time that I've been out of town for a while. So that'll be really nice. Nice. Thank you so much. All right, Charity, come in your way. Hello, my name is Charity Nelson. Um, I've got a background in human resources and economic development. Um, what I'm appreciating right now is I am now on day two of taking a little break from those professions and spending some time with my children that are 10 and 12. So definitely appreciating extra time before they become teenagers. I have a kid going to college and the other one's doing driver's ed. So yeah, enjoy that. Enjoy that. All right, Laura, go ahead. Yeah. Am I up? Hi, as, hi, I'm Jeanette Curtis. I am a social worker and I'm the director of our street outreach team that serves the Our Path Home Partnership. Uh, we go out into the community and meet anybody experiencing homelessness or a housing crisis and try to get them connected to resources. Uh, one thing I'm grateful for, like so many of you, is all the opportunities in the Northwest to get out and go camping and trying to get my kids out as much as possible this summer as well. Love it. Thank you. Oh, I'm just going to be weird and come right next to her and go to Jody. Hi, my name is Jody Peterson Steigers. I'm the executive director of Interfaith Sanctuary. And I'm super grateful that tomorrow I'm getting on a plane with my two sons. Um, one of them starts medical school in August at University of Washington. And we're going to be um, in Northern California enjoying some cooler weather. So I'm very excited. sneak attack, but you're up next. Good evening, everybody. My name is Joe Hernandez, and I'm here representing the New Path Home. And uh, I'm just I'm very grateful to be here and getting out the house for the first time. Thank you, everybody. Glad to have you here, Joe. Thanks. Hi, I'm Stephanie Day, the executive director of Catch, and I'm going to, I'm usually the odd man out and doing these things. So I'm going to shift it to get a little serious for a second, and then you can go back to other things. But um, when I think about what I'm really appreciative of 
like in this moment, like I've, I've been in the homeless services world for 14 years and the place that we are now and like how sophisticated we are and how we're having like strategic system level conversations, future planning is like super exciting to me. So I'm very excited about this um, and just really appreciative for all of you guys and being willing to be on this journey with us. Hi, my name is Hillary Takahashi and I'm here representing the Collister Neighborhood Association. And I guess something I'm appreciating is I have a family visiting us in Boise for the first time. So I'm excited preparing for uh, their visit. Oh, I love it. That's great. Fun, fun to hear about these celebrations. Councilwoman Clegg. Thank you. Elaine Clegg, I am the City Council President, Boise City Council. Um, really excited to be here over the last eight months. I've worked hard to uh, work with the mayor and the rest of the council to ensure that we have some resources for permanent supportive houses, housing, um, more resources than we've had uh, previously. And, you know, combined with, I think, the federal resources that are coming along. I'm, I think there's some exciting things that this group can talk about um, in terms of leveraging those resources to make shelter better. And so I'm very excited to be here um, personally for those reasons. On a personal note, um, I have five kids and 12 grandchildren. They were all here in Boise for almost two and a half weeks. And it was uh, fun. And the day they left, I could hardly get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm just so thankful to have such a, a wonderful family and so much support. Um, you know, I think all of us who work in these kinds of, of issues, having, having that personal support behind you can really be the thing that uh, ensures that you can continue doing this work. So for me, it is. I'm Andy Scoggin, and uh, I'm currently the president of the board of directors for the uh, interface sanctuary i've been on the board for over 10 years now and have been serving in this role for about uh close to five of those i think um so that's my affiliation uh, for being here today my first appreciation is that everybody in this room is committing you know time in a very busy lives and schedules to come together um, sponsored by the mayor and the and the city council to talk about these issues because I think um, our city has already done some um, you know some very good things and by the city I don't mean the government I mean city government but also people throughout this city um, but um, you know things are coming at us so it's really important that we uh, be ahead of uh, the curve with solutions etc and all of you that are you know, spending the time um, here in these kind of meetings and working together and collaborating, coalescing is really, really important. Other appreciation is I love that we live in a city that has a river running right through the middle of it. And uh, this weekend, my wife and I got to take our five little grandkids down and splash and see little duck families who are starting to grow up and, uh, you know, throw sticks and rocks and see them splash in the water for, you know, hours, which um, you know, not every city, uh, and I've lived in a lot of cities, uh, has such a great amenity as a beautiful river running through the middle of it. Um, we had a lot of other great things here, too. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tom Helmer. I am the president of the Sunset Neighborhood Association. Um, so here representing those folks. And we're not the North End, by the way. Um, I appreciate a few things. I One, I appreciate I live in a city that uh care so much about the neighborhoods and our underserved populations that we're willing to get together in this fashion and, and have a conversation have real conversations about it i think that's amazing um i also appreciate i i got to fly home last week and surprise my mom and my family back east in rochester and um and it was it was the first time in over two years i'd seen my family so that was neat and my last appreciation there's three i have is I am able to live in a place where tonight I'm gonna to go ride my bike in the foothills and it's gonna be dark out and I hopefully will get to pretend there's no smoke in the air because it'll be dark, so. And no coyotes. No coyotes. Uh -huh. Oh, he doesn't care about those. 
My name is Tammy Keggy, and I'm here representing New Path Community Housing. And I have appreciation for some of the more simpler things, and that is that I have my unit at New Path Housing with my significant other, Joe, and we are not homeless, and we have an air conditioning unit in this heat. Um, I am so excited for me and my partner to be a part of the solution to what's going on in the community of Boise. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Can we get an amen for air conditioning? Ooh. All right, Rachel. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Rachel Strong. I am the Director of Administration at Boise Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. And um, I'm kind of a plate, plate, place filler for the next couple of weeks. Um, the minister, Reverend Sarah Lawal, has accepted to serve on the task force, but she is on vacation for a couple of weeks. So I will be here taking notes and relaying information and sharing this experience with her. Um, so I am really appreciating just being here. I was very uh, appreciative to Reverend Sarah to invite me to fill her seat for a couple of weeks. And um, I'm also just really appreciating being in a room full of wonderful community members and not on Zoom. Rachel and I went to high school together, by the way, small town stories. Hi, I'm Jennifer Godoy. I'm a business owner and artist here in Boise, Idaho. I own Paint and Sip. Um, I'm also a neighborhood leader, so I think we're the special ones, just saying. Uh, um, I'm actually really appreciative to be here. This is, this is really exciting for me. Um, I grew up with a mother who struggles with homelessness and still does, and so this is very exciting to be part of the solution here. Yeah, thanks for being here. All right, B. Good morning. B. Black, uh, CEO for WCA, Women's and Children's Alliance. And uh, two things I really appreciate. One is I just really appreciate the efforts in particularly been noticeable, I would say in the last 18 months of all the nonprofits in our community that provide social services to the underserved, really working together. I think we have a very unique community from what I hear in terms of that. Uh, working to support each other and knowing that the more we work together, the better we can support those who need our services. The second thing is uh, more of a selfish appreciation. Um, running in the foothills in the mornings has been what's kept me sane the last 18 months. So I really appreciate the ability to go out and just enjoy the fabulous foothills and the trails that we have. Although I have to say, I don't like that the bikes still get to use some of the trails and I don't. That's a different task force, we'll have a conversation later. My name is Jesus Camacho. I'm a Catholic priest and I came here 40 years ago. I was invited by the Roman Catholic Diocese of Boise to help with people who come here mainly of people who are in need. My service has been focused mainly on people who need help. I was trying to serve. I will try to be careful and correct in my language with the help of the papers. It helped me a lot. People who are housed in the prisons and jails. I was trying to serve them for 15 years. It's a wonderful experience. And people who come here to migrate to look for a better life for themselves and to make Idaho greater. It's another wonderful experience. In I personally am very, very interested and I'm so thankful for the invitation. Hopefully I can be of help and good to see you. And I know that you are people who make a difference here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. You didn't want to be last. Jeez. You can, you can get me back later. It's my punishment for being late. Um, hi, my name is Serena. Um, I am also a local business owner. Um, I hesitate to say this, but I am an internationally known psychic medium. Um, and uh, I actually was homeless for a very long time. And so um, I was very honored to be asked to be a part of this team, which is one of the things I'm grateful for. And I also appreciate the nice new house I live in, just like you guys. Um, it has air conditioning, and I am very grateful to not be stuck in my camping trailer anymore in this heat. So uh, thank you all for letting me be here. Did we get everybody? All right. Okay, I have some um, logistics to go over in terms of what you can expect from this task force and from me over the next few months. So as you saw for today, the general format of meetings is that we'll ask you to do a little homework before each meeting. It won't, you actually won't usually be readings like you had for today. We'll often send out videos um, and we'll try to keep things brief because we know that you're busy folks. But the idea here is to just develop sort of a shared understanding around some issues around homelessness. I'm not a housing or homelessness expert myself. And I assume not everybody in the room is either. Some of you definitely are in different ways. But that's just um, having some of that homework will help us um, have a nice shared starting point. Um, we'll also make sure that we share an agenda with you before each meeting, so there shouldn't be any surprises. Um, there will be objectives stated for the meeting along with what we plan to do during each meeting. Um, as you heard already, it's summertime, people are leaving, traveling, that is just fine. We just ask that you send a representative in your place who can then communicate with you when you get back about what you missed and who also can participate fully in the meetings. Um, and it would be helpful if you would email me and just introduce me to your sub so that I can make sure they get the meeting materials and, and say hello to them too. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure that you all have my email. Um, and we're going to try to keep things moving so that you're not just sitting and watching PowerPoints for every meeting. There will be one meeting that is like that, is death by slides and information. Um, I'm not going to tell you which week it is because you may not show up. But otherwise, we're going to keep you talking and moving and thinking together. That said, we are on a fairly compressed timeline. I know that that is a hard thing to come up against, but um, there are needs in the community that have to be met and decisions that have to be made. And so that is why we are moving at the pace we are moving at. Um, I also pledge to send you a summary after each meeting of what I think we covered. We have folks from the city who are taking notes, and I'll try to send out just a brief one pager. If I get something wrong, or if you need me to add something or subtract something, just shoot me an email. I'm very happy to do that. Um, I hope this is a collaborative process. Okay, this piece is a little trickier to explain, and I, if I get it wrong, I hope one of my um, city partners will step up. We um, struggled with how to make sure that we get good public engagement and good public collaboration for this. We obviously can't have everybody in the room or it wouldn't be a productive discussion, right? You're here because you represent different constituencies probably. Um, we'll talk more about why you're here in a little bit. Um, but we wanna make sure that we do have some methods for the public to feedback. So those of you who are neighborhood representatives, for example, we hope that you're talking with folks in your neighborhoods. That's one way to get feedback. Others of you talk with your clients or your coworkers. But the city also is going to be doing some interviews with folks who represent constituencies that might not be here in the room. So if you can think of a group of people who we somehow neglected to invite to be part of this process, please shoot me an email with a recommendation for who we might interview through the city to make sure that that feedback gets incorporated. Okay, we wanna keep this an open and transparent process. Folks of you who are on Zoom um, and are participating that way as members of the public, we also invite your feedback 
that feedback is going to go to the task force chair, Courtney Washburn, and you'll send that feedback to the email info at cityofboise.org. That's info at cityofboise.org. And we'll make sure that information is on the city website for the task force as well. Um, media contacts are gonna go through Lana Gray Beal, and we'll make sure that information is made as well. So if you get requests to do media um, or give feedback to the media, you're welcome to send that Lana's way. Did I get it? All right, cool. All right, what's my commitment to you as a facilitator? Um, my commitment is to make sure that I address any weird process stuff that might be happening in the room. So if one or two voices end up dominating for some reason, I don't think that's gonna happen but I'll just step in and we'll address it and we'll make sure that we're hearing from a wide group of people. Um, if there's some issue with readings or materials or activities, I'm really responsive to all of that and we can figure that out as we go. Um, but I have to balance your input and your reflection with this need to keep us moving. Okay, so sometimes I'll make those tough calls. But uh, you all have my email now. I think I emailed everybody last night because I missed a page and a scan. Um, so you have my email and please contact me if you have questions or concerns. Okay, any logistical type questions before we move on to conversation? Okay, great. Hmm, hmm. we will check that list. Okay, yeah, it came yesterday afternoon. Okay, so just for folks who are on the Zoom, there's just a content, um, some comments that they did not get an email from me. I will make sure that that gets fixed. Thanks for that. Okay, anything else? All right, so let's see. Hi, Maureen. How's it going? I think you're up. So we are gonna have a super brief presentation from Maureen Brewer. She's gonna introduce herself. Um, it's just gonna be five minutes and then we are going to talk with one another. You're actually going to do a little writing in those journals we gave you for just a few minutes. And then you're going to have a chance to talk with one another about what it's like to be in this room and sort of your perspectives on what's happened so far. Hi, thanks so much for being here. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, I think this isn't going to quite be a presentation per se, but I wanted to kind of give some uh, framework and some additional context of course, you all understand why you're here today, so I won't go over that in detail. Um, my name is Maureen Brewer. I think I've interacted with a handful of you, most of you. I'm the senior manager for the Housing and uh, Homelessness Community Development Division here at the city. So I think the mayor and Courtney and others have done kind of a nice framing in terms of why we're here. Um, certainly our path home, which is the public-private partnership working to end homelessness in Ada County, of which the city of Boise is the lead agency. Our charge is to move people experiencing homelessness into permanent housing. And I think you all um, understand and can appreciate the complexity of that, especially given how, especially historically remarkably under-resourced we have been. So if that's our North Star, and that's something that we're working towards you know, through our strategic plan and making right-sized investments, et cetera, we still have, as the mayor and others have mentioned, a crisis tonight, a crisis today, given the heat outside, et cetera, um, a crisis during the winter months when it's particularly cold outside. So balancing, kind of threading that needle between serving and sort of supporting our emergency shelter partners while also keeping our eye on the North Star is really the challenge before us. Um, I wanted to specify that my role, I will be back before you, I think in week six or so, to talk about siting a new shelter. Um, so I just wanna name that and put that out there. And we'll have opportunities to talk through um, what those specific possibilities for sites might be. Um, but what I wanted to share with you this morning, and I think this is gonna come home with you in the handout, is the shelter siting feasibility criteria. So there are a set of criteria that we'll need to adhere to as a matter of best practice. And then you all will have an opportunity 
to provide feedback on what these criteria are as you do some shared learning together over the course of the next few weeks. So without further ado, <laughs> um, first there are six of these total. Um, the first is land availability. So the proposed location, and let me preface this with one more comment that this isn't a theoretical conversation necessarily, right? Like we have a practical matter before us that we need to solve. So these feasibility criteria are put together with that in mind as well. So the first is land availability. The proposed location needs to be on land owned by the city or by a partner agency or available for purchase. The second is timeline driven. The proposed location needs to be available to develop or redevelop in a timely manner to ensure that we can meet this night by night crisis. One that we in the coming weeks will help quantify for you. Um, the third is a right sized investment. This is tricky. There's this threading of the needle between managing the crisis tonight and the investment that we need for long term permanent supportive housing. The fourth is proximity to services. The proposed location needs to be in close proximity to public services and those experiencing homelessness or be along transit routes that easily connect those community members to services. Number five, <laughs> site development. The proposed location must accommodate the needs in terms of the proposed shelter size. So I'm talking about total number of beds and who those beds are designed to serve and the parcel's ability to support that size. So think code compliance. And then lastly, number six here, shelter design. The, the proposed location and the design of that shelter must be manageable for interfaith sanctuaries, operational needs, and their business plan. So this needs to be something that is both feasible and possible for our shelter partner to carry out. Thanks so much, Maureen. Okay, I know that was a lot to digest. We are gonna make sure that gets posted at every meeting and that it will also be shared with you, okay? Because those are things we'll have to return to again and again. Yes, Councilwoman McClick. Maureen, can you email that list to the group? Yep, okay. We will make sure that gets sent out. Okay, yes. Okay, hold on, we got a mic, yeah. So I, I may have missed something with that, but one, one thing it sounds like is that the city is looking for one location, or we are tasked with finding one location. And is that is that what I'm hearing from that? Yes, but can I can I put a pin in that discussion? Absolutely. I Absolutely. promise we will get a chance to discuss. I figured you would specifics about that. Yep. Okay. Um, so where we're going to start here is we, go ahead and get out those journals and pens or whatever you want to write in for today. And I want to just give you a few minutes to answer these questions and I'll write them on the board too. I want you to reflect on, first of all, why you think you were invited here today. And then the second thing I'd like you to write about, and here's where you could maybe reflect on that, is respond to these feasibility principles that you just heard. And that can be question that you have, something that feels challenging, something that you're excited about. So let's just do those two things in the interest of time and I'll jot them on the board.
Just take one more minute. Okay, go ahead and finish that sentence you're working on. All right, now we're gonna just get you up out of your chairs for a minute. I'd like you to go meet somebody from across the room that you don't know, maybe reintroduce yourself and then share a little bit about what you wrote about. So we're gonna take five minutes to do this. Oh, my students hate it and I can see it on your faces too. It'll be all right. Thank you, thank you, Andy. Okay, if the second person hasn't had a chance to speak yet, please make sure to switch. All right, we're gonna take one more minute. Okay, thanks everybody. Go ahead and take a seat. All right, I have one more quick writing assignment for you. This time I'd like you to reflect on the readings that we um, sent you for today. If you had them, if you didn't, that's okay. We'll catch you up. But I'd like you to uh, maybe pick out two things from the readings that struck you. And it could be struck you positively or negatively, or maybe you have a question about them. 
So, and if, if folks don't have them, I have a couple of extra copies here. Just raise your hand. No problem. Two things that struck you from the readings for today, positively, negatively, or otherwise. Take one more minute. We're having pen malfunctions. Oh. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to have a group conversation. I know there's a lot of us here. Um, but just as a reminder, when you speak, just raise your hand because we have to get you a mic. And I'm going to do my best to record the conversation up here. Um, so I'm interested both in your reactions to the feasibility principles um, and in your reactions to the readings. So whichever feels most pressing to you now. And the idea is just really to surface what's top of mind for you now, as opposed to trying to resolve anything today. We're going to pace things out over the next eight meetings and hopefully get you all the answers and resources you need to make an informed decision. But let's start talking about what's on your mind for today. B, we'll start with you and then we'll go to Jody. So you wanted the answers to those two questions you just posed, right? Whichever one you would is more interesting to you to respond to. Okay. I thought the the importance of language um, was really interesting to me. Houseless versus homeless, unhoused versus homeless. I hadn't thought about it that way before. And I just thought that was something that jumped out at me. The other thing that jumped out at me was um, the importance of process. And I guess I, that's what I see this group hopefully enabling is through that process, uh, greater information being put out, greater transparency, greater dialogue, um, get better understanding of all the different factors from all points of view and being able to address those. So epitomized by the CASC group and the work that they do. So those would be the two things that jumped out to me. Yeah, thanks so much. I love that theme of perspective sharing really seems to come through both of those comments. Thanks for that. Okay, Jody. So one was the dates from the writings being in the 1990s and that the problems are still the same. It was a little scary that I was reading sentences that we're writing today and we're still looking for that solution for how do we create more affordable housing and how do we get more people off the street. So that was really telling to me. The other thing that was really interesting to me was um, the perception with, um, and I hate even saying the word, but the NIMBY article and kind of the misunderstanding of language that perhaps the opposition, what they're trying to communicate is a lack of being heard, equity, equality, um, that the decision-making process um, they they feel left out of and I, I it really resonated with me because the conversations i feel like we've been in have been all about the building mm -hmm. but it's more than that i think and i i think it's really important like i'm hoping that this task force allows for there to be a really clear picture of city projects versus 
private nonprofit projects. Um, decisions are made much differently based on that. And so I, I hope that we can kind of sit in there and, and talk and get better understanding for each other. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I like what I heard there, which is that the, some of the readings helped us understand that we have lots of different values that we're bringing to the table. Yes, in that one case from the 1990s, right? Not a new problem, not a new problem. Serena. Um, I feel excited or optimistic about um, the things that she was going over, um, those things. <laughs> um, I was already getting ideas. I've had ideas as I've been going through homelessness myself. Um, so I feel optimistic and I feel like we can all get together and potentially make things happen. Um, I feel really positive about the things and where we could possibly go with all of this. So just wanted to be something positive. Yeah, thanks for bringing that comment into the room. The idea that we have some agency here. Tim. Um, I would like to add that I agree with Jody because the the with house without housing situation or homeless problem, which I refer to as homelessness because I've experienced it myself and my partner. I think it goes much deeper than just being without a house. It goes it goes into hygiene, it goes into emotional stability and, and resources to help the people who are, are going through this crisis and what it does to their minds and what it does to the, it causes addictions. It goes so much deeper than just being without a roof over your head. There's, there's people who have pets that have to, that just don't want to give up on those animals because they're a part of their family. And it may not seem like something important to a person who has a house to go to every day or has food on the table but I've had a, a dog with me and Joe for the seven years we've been together. I met Joe five, minute, five months after I got Diesel, and he has been through foster care. He's been to the pound. We have saved him so many times. And finally, we found housing through Tomlinson, Tomlinson New, uh, New Path Community Housing, and it's been a blessing. So like, a, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but homelessness isn't just about not having a roof over your head it's so much deeper and community programs and counseling and 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 even the 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 opportunity to be involved in a 12 step program for someone who's homeless who thinks oh my gosh i have nowhere to go tonight so i'll spend my last seven dollars on a bottle of booze i've experienced it i have four and a half years sobriety and i went through a program and and that, that's about all I have. I think I've said enough. Thank you so Anybody much. Else? Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. What I heard is that there are lots of dimensions of homelessness and also that homelessness is a systemic issue, right? So we're going to dive into some of that complexity in the meetings to come. I'd like to hear from folks who haven't had a chance to speak yet. Councilwoman Clegg. Um, so for me, the the language around this is um, really fascinating, but also I think, and I think both Jody and B touched on this, also potentially creates barriers. If people are worried that they're not using the correct language, or they don't know what the correct language is, or if they're talking in ways that aren't easily understood by whoever it is they're trying to talk to, um, I think, you know, potentially we have barriers. So I think part of what I hope this group can do is be open and willing to listen to what, however, anyone wants to express something and try to understand what it is they're expressing and not how they're doing it, because I think that that will be really important. In terms of the um, criteria, I, I think these are a great start, but I'm hopeful that we can have a discussion around them and particularly around criteria based on the other part of the community where these services will be cited and the impacts on them. I think if we only have criteria on one side, then we'll probably have missed the boat. Okay, I'm just capturing that one moment. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. So, um, as I said earlier, I am not an expert in housing or homelessness, and so learning the appropriate language is also a challenge for me being here. And I think the idea is to try to be gen generous with one another. That's why we chose readings that sensitize the room to various 
perspectives, right? And thinking about how we all approach this, this issue. I think the goal is to try to speak to one another with dignity and to remember that folks experiencing homelessness are not the other, right? So the goal is not to be language police in here, but to just remind one another of our shared humanity. Did you wanna jump in real quick, I just Serena? wanted to say that I personally have gone through homelessness and I don't mind being referred to as homeless. It's not something I take offense to as far as verbiage goes. So just so you know, I've been there, I don't take offense to that word or that phrase. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Andy. Thank you. And uh, uh, with regard to the reading, start with that. Um, they, um, you know, words are always changing, language changes, societies change the use of language. And um, so it's all, you know, there's always, it's always moving ahead of us. But I think the two things I took away that were valuable out of those readings were, first of all, that what people who were, uh, they, that were quoted in the articles and that were, um, you know, were, expressing uh, opinions in these articles that the real drive or strive, uh, what they're striving to do is to make sure that language didn't depersonalize individuals. And so, you know, labels um, can do that. And um, we know because uh, we know our guests, we know the people that live uh, with us and what we work with, and each one has a very different story. And each one has a you know, has a very different way that they've come in and out of the circumstances that they're in and how they're going to get out of that. And it has to be very personal to them. And sometimes language can, uh, can block, you know, and, and we can, and we've heard it in, in, you know, not just in the meetings with these neighborhoods, but for 10 years, 15 years, I, I was actually involved in community house for this and shelter network in San Mateo, San Mateo County, California on that board for years. So it's, it's not uncommon that people, you know, who, don't have the opportunity to work with a group. In this case, it's people who, uh, you know, don't have their own home, uh, but it could be a completely different group. How do we make sure that the individuality doesn't get lost in the name? And I think that's what they're trying to share with us. And so there's no perfect term and, you know, we don't want to be police of that, but we want to make sure that we don't lose the individuality. With regard to the second question, which is these criteria, um, I feel like they're a good start, but I would agree that we need to, you know, there's detail around every one of those that have to be understood. And there's multiple constituencies around every one of those that need to be understood as well. Yeah, thank you. And to be clear, this is just the start of the conversation, right? Um, but it's good to know sort of where the city is starting, I think. Okay, great. That's okay, I can go really quick. Um, so I just kind of wanted to reiterate too, like what now um, Councilwoman Clegg and Jody and um, Andy have said, um, when we did the exercise and we're talking about the feasibility principles, I talked to one of the neighborhood um, leaders and like to me, like when I wrote it down, I was like, oh, those seem very straightforward, practical, thorough, but there is another perspective to be taken into consideration. And so um, I just really appreciate all of these perspectives in the same room. Like if, if it was just the service providers making these calls, like Jody said, it would be a different outcome than if you have all the voices involved. So I really appreciate that. And this whole conversation has just been making me think about something that at Catch internally, we've been discussing recently about um, like assuming positive intent all the time. So like everybody in this room cares about this, the subject. That's why we're here. And if we do say something wrong or like something comes out wrong, like just assuming like, oh, well, like we all have a heart for this and we all want the right outcome. Um, and being willing to walk into any conversation, uh, like me being willing to walk into any conversation and have my mind changed. Um, so anyway, just kind of wanted to share those thoughts, but really appreciative for all of the different perspectives in this room, because I think we'll come up with a much better solution for the community if we all make this decision together. Yeah, thanks so much. I love that. Assume positive intent. That's radical. It's 2021. That is radical. Please. Um, so I just wanted to comment on the criteria. Um, I really have no preconceived notion about site or sites or anything, but the bottom line for me is um, we have a we have a hospital service at St. Alphonsus, so we take care of inpatients, and we take care of a lot of um, people who are low income or homeless on that service. And when I have a patient who's just gotten out of the hospital who's still pretty sick with congestive heart failure or emphysema or pneumonia or whatever they have, 
I cannot be discharging that person onto the street. So there has to be space for everyone who wants to be sheltered um, because that that is just, I mean, it's it would be inhumane not to have that in Boise. You know, if it's 20 degrees or if it's 105, a person who's already medically fragile is not gonna make it and is gonna be right back in the hospital. Yeah, thank you. That helps us um, to keep in mind what we're, we're really working on here. Thank you. Okay, I have another hand here. I, I okay. see a real challenge and my personal concern, how to find a common ground for all parts to make all parts instead of fragmentation to come together as a kind of a community project, not just a group or a government. How to help the city to feel that this is our, our project um, because this is our people not strangers. They are part of our community. So I, I see the part of our contribution for this group would be how to find a common ground to make this possible. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so in going over the reading and what kind of struck me, I was interested in how many coincidences there were with kind of the the project at hand right now and also wondering about some of the things um that came up in the article that maybe i don't have enough information on yet to connect that with this specific um or the specific goal of this task force so i was kind of trying to make the connections where they were and wondering what other information about this specific um site this specific goal um that i don't have yet uh i think the other thing was you know the importance of of language which has been already said in this group but um this is kind of it's been kind of cast as opposed or in favor and i think it's a much more complicated issue when you really get down to looking at it more in depth i just want to make sure i correctly capture what you said so similarities between the case and the reading and what we're trying to do here in boise mm -hmm. or you want more detail around what we're trying to do in so, boise for instance obviously the shortage in affordable housing was something where i was like oh that very much connects and how um housing prices were kind of skyrocketing in that particular city um the things that I was a little less clear on were um, some of the more specific points, like the commercial housing, having um, the shelter there when it was for educational purposes. So there were some nuanced items that I was a little less clear on, but the overall um, city comparison, I don't know. I feel like I'm still being a little bit unclear, but- oh, I gotcha. Yeah, there's okay. some striking similarities huh. between the two, and yet there's some details that we need to understand better. Yeah, to see absolutely. If, yeah, what the differences are. Very good. Please go ahead. Um, so I just wanted to. I'm sorry, it's Katie, right? Katie. Mm -hmm. Okay, trying to learn people's names. Go ahead. So I felt very heard reading these articles, as everybody's noticed. There are striking similar similarities, despite the 20 year time gap and the the difference in the types of shelter being discussed. Um, I thought that the NIMBY article did a really good job of humanizing the opposition. I think as Andy noted, there's been a, deep, a lot of depersonalization in the conversations. And I think that that has come from both sides. Um, and our group has really been trying to speak very respectfully and honor all of the individuals and that would be prospectively served by the project. And somehow that falls out in a lot of the media coverage or a lot of the official statements that have been made. Um, so I, I just felt that it was really important to have that in-depth review of how that opposition was feeling and a lot of their concerns were mirrored by ours. Um, and similarly with the CASC article, um, we actually read it in full, but 
it just noted how important it was for the operator to spend time engaging with the community and specifically working to address legitimate concerns. And that's something that we have felt has been missing. It, it, it has felt that when concerns are raised, they've just kind of been brushed off and there hasn't been an attempt to work together to address anything. And yeah, that, thank you so much for that, Katie. I really appreciate that. I think it's interesting, even your language that you're calling yourselves the opposition. Right, I assume you, you're talking about the neighborhoods, right? And it'll be interesting to see if that is something we want to stick with moving forward. Thank you so much for those reflections. Who haven't we heard from yet? Who would like to speak? Yes, please go ahead. This is Jeanette again Thanks, from Jeanette. Homeless Outreach. Um, just a comment about the criteria and um, the process that we're tasked with. I'm really excited that we are taking a step back to approach this in a data-driven way, in a strategic way, but also that we are intentionally being inclusive. And so I'm thinking particularly with your invitation, Jen, about what can I do to help bring in the voices of the people that I serve, who are a lot of folks who are experiencing unsheltered homelessness. And some of them, um, uh, some of them probably could be served differently in a in a more expanded shelter situation. So I'm going to really be thinking about that and running that by the group too. About what, you know what data do you need, what voices do you need, what other kinds of participation can we have to make sure that we're including that voice too of people currently experiencing homelessness. Yeah, I so appreciate that the idea that we're balancing sort of data driven, evidence driven approaches and bringing in lived experience and stories from, from folks that way. We have some great data for you too when you're yeah. ready. Love it. Okay, thank you so much. Charity. Thank you. I, you know, the thing that really struck me about the readings was um, all good intent in the case study and yet a lot of um, preconceived notions about what people would think or feel on both sides. And I think no matter what we do in our lives, that typically gets us in trouble when we think we know what others are thinking. Um, so that that just came to my mind is really where you've got to actually ask those questions and, and get the understanding and not think that you know where someone's coming from because of their educational background or where they live or, or any of those things. So that really stuck with me as where, where this group has to go to truly listening and understanding as opposed to believing we already know. Yeah, so being open to ask questions and also some trust, I think, right? Maybe we have some work to do to build trust. Time for one more comment. Anybody who hasn't had a chance to speak yet? I want to make sure I've heard from somebody who hasn't spoken yet. And Tom. Um, I appreciate everything that's been said. I think most of what's been said, what I'm thinking has been said already. I do want to back to my earlier comment about the pin being dropped, make sure that I think these guidelines are amazing, but we might need to go outside of the guidelines even and look beyond that um, for what's best for the community, or we, we might not. And that's, I think, but I want us to be aware of that going forward. Okay, capturing that. Yeah, this is really helpful. I think the team and I will um, brainstorm ways to do that in a structured way. Um, because there probably are some pieces that are not negotiable, right? We can't spend billions of dollars <laughs> on a shelter. That's probably not negotiable. But there might be other pieces where we can have discussions and feedback, right? Okay, I am going to keep us moving because we have another task we need to do. Um, I know we're going to move. Sorry, Jody. We, Jody, you are going to be on week four, right? Yeah. We have you set up. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I want to make sure I capture that for our Zoom folks. Jody was just saying that it's been hard to communicate and build trust with one another because of the pandemic. We haven't been able to see each other in a way we would have liked. Yeah, that's a great comment. Okay, here is what I um, would like for us to do now is based on that conversation, I would like for us just to set up some norms around how this group might function in terms of how we want to speak with one another um, and how we want to move forward. So I could very easily say, um, you can't speak for more than two minutes or something like that. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather that we as a group decide on um, some guidelines for engaging one another. 
So it sounds like, um, let me see if I can just spin this around. Oh yeah, teacher trick. There's a whole other one on this side. So I'll just model an example of what guidelines could look like based on what you already told me. One might be, um, oh, I'm gonna just borrow the language, I liked it. So be generous in our interpretations. And what I mean by that is um, you may get your feelings hurt in here or may hear something that offends you. And if you can take a moment, check in with your own reactivity. We can certainly process it if it's a problem for the group, but the idea is to try to meet one another um, in a solution space, right? Okay, I heard, so, I heard one, another one. Agree to disagree. Well, we can probably, I can probably just, um, Laura, I can probably just re repeat them so you're not running around. I heard agree to disagree. Yeah, we don't have to all agree, um, uh, even on the final recommendations that we don't have to agree every week, right? That's true, B. Yes. Seek to understand, ask questions. For folks on Zoom, I'm just repeating what I'm hearing in the room. Councilwoman Clay? Yeah, salute. So, so I love that, be solution oriented. For those of us who aren't so wonky, what does that mean to be solution oriented? It, it means that we're not here to just talk about things that might feel good. We're here to figure out how to actually get those things done in a way that directly serves the people who need those services. Yeah, that's right. So we are gonna be talking some about feelings and reactions in here and experiences, and we also have to make some decisions, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for that, Tammy. For everybody to keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. Okay, the comment was we need to look to the long term and think about long term solutions as we're discussing short term needs. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Yes, Courtney. I'm capturing that. So the comment was, we can engage negative impacts, but we don't want to over-focus on them. Yeah? Okay. Bring a solution to it. Or even if you don't have a solution, maybe the group has a solution. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So use the group intelligence. If you have a problem or a quest, um, question, bring it to the group. Excellent. Anything else? Yeah, center human beings. Right, thank you for that. Okay, so I'll just add one. I uh, nodded to it earlier. I didn't see it at all today, but some of us are oversharers. That's me. I was like the kid in kindergarten who was like, teacher, teacher, teacher. Um, and some of us are introverts, like my husband, who would rather die than speak in a group setting. Um, so I think it's just important to know which one you are and to, um, if you are somebody who overshares, just monitor how much you're contributing. I already saw that today, that's wonderful, so that we can make space for other voices. And if you're somebody who tends not to participate, you might just see if you can rev up some courage and um, contribute to the group that way. Sound good? Okay, good. 
All right, thank you so much for that. We will make sure to capture this and we will bring them each week, just as a reminder of some of the agreements that we're interested in following. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do today before we um, close is that we wanna um, talk about a statement of commitment. So let's see, Casey, oh, is it back here? Okay, so um, the idea behind having a sort of partner statement of commitment is simply because, as was alluded to earlier, things could get rocky here and there, because we might disagree on some things. And also, this is going to take all of us or folks we send in our stead to really stay committed to the process, because it's a tough problem, right? And so we would like to propose a statement of commitment that we're going to ask you to make changes to because this was just a draft. It's just what we came up with in the conference room. Um, but here's what we're proposing. And then we're going to have you just talk with a partner about changes you might propose and we'll make note of that. And then once we get something that we're all mostly happy with, we'll print it out and bring it to future meetings as well. Okay. Everybody doesn't have to be 100% happy, but like if this is really unhappy and this is extremely happy, if everybody's like this, that's pretty good. I'll be happy with that. So here's what it says for folks who are not in the room. Partner statement of commitment. As members of the Shelter Better Task Force and leaders in the Boise community, which all of you are, we commit to developing recommendations that serve our entire city, including our fellow community members experiencing homelessness. We will work in partnership with the city and interfaith sanctuary to advance the goals set forth by this body. Again, this may have pieces that you don't quite like that don't sound quite right to you. So I wanna give you a few minutes to speak with somebody next to you or a few people next to you. Maybe propose some changes and just come up here. There's some markers and just write in some changes that you might suggest and we can talk about them. Okay, so we're going to workshop this with 25, this is insane, 20 people are going to wordsmith this, but we're going to try it, okay? So I'm going to turn the mic off, please take a few minutes and chat with some other folks and uh, propose changes. And if you like it and think, think it's perfect, that's fine too.
All right, everybody, we are uh, almost at time. I have, uh, Katie's gonna make one more comment up here. We will make sure to take these into account and do a revision for next week. And then you'll have a chance to kind of up or down what the revision we come up with. Does that sound good? Okay, thanks, Katie. All right, I'm gonna just turn things over. Um, oh, quick comment. Uh, we do not have a meeting next week, Casey, right? No meeting next week, because we're gonna double up one in August. So you'll hear from us in the next few days. You'll hear from us in the next few days about homework for the meeting that's two weeks from now, okay? Um, but no meeting next week. And I'm gonna uh, hand the mic to Courtney just to close things out as the chair. You can just say goodbye. I just wanna thank everybody um, again for coming. I know it's summer um, and I know um, everybody probably could think of things they'd rather be doing. But on behalf of the mayor, um, we appreciate your service. Um, we think this is an important community discussion and we're just excited to have you all here. So thank you. And again, if you have any questions, um, just let me know and I will try to find the answers. Thanks everybody. Thanks all. And if you'll just check with Rachel as you leave the room, we wanna make sure we have your correct contact information because I need to be in touch with you. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.